Hi, this is Jim Bergman for Stride Tool. Today I thought we'd take a few minutes and actually go over the iManifold hardware. In the earlier video we went over all the software and you got a chance to see our application, but today I wanted to take a few minutes and show you how the iManifold was made, what makes it special, what makes it tick, how it operates, and we'll go a little bit over our hardware so you have a better understanding of what you're buying if you buy the iManifold product. When we started this project, we, we literally started from scratch, and we wanted to incorporate elements of the Imperial designs that were really the, the elements that made the products work, uh, work well for the industry and the field, proven designs such as our manifold, yet we also had completely new things to consider, such as our hose park solution and uh, what we we're going to do for our display. So each element of this thing, I want to take a few minutes and go over and explain why we chose the technology we chose and how we came to the to the design that we have today and I think you'll appreciate a little bit more on what makes this product such a unique product and why you're really going to like the i-manifold. So this is a cutaway of our 900 series manifold and it's a diaphragm type seal and diaphragms have a huge advantage over o-ring seals and the fact that what this diaphragm does is it flexes and don't let the small amount of space here fool you because you got to look at total amount of area so you have this huge surface area here and even though it's only open a small amount it actually lets a large amount of gas pass through it very quickly the diaphragm the primary advantage is, is when we start to close this diaphragm off you can see that it's not flexing right away but then when it does start to flex it goes in and it bends it down and it presses against the seat here to, to create the seal so the seal's right here. It's a very nice tight seal. Now the advantage is it's fingertip tight and it's completely sealed off and then only about one turn and it's fully open. So you never want to take a diaphragm all the way back and back seat it because what will happen is you'll jam the, the handle back in and it really won't open any further than one, than one full turn. So it's one full turn to close, one full turn to open, and the diaphragm's fully open and you have full flow through the porting. When we started designing the i-manifold, we knew we had to make an elegant yet very simple functional solution. And I think we really hit a home run with the design. Number one, we went with all aluminum design. So the, the sides are aluminum, the manifold's aluminum, uh, even the T's are uh, cast aluminum that are uh, uh, anodized black. We wanted to make the thing really, really robust and durable. There was a lot though that went into just the form and shape of this product and I think uh, first of all I'd like to start with the hose parks on here. In our hose parks we made adjustable so on the side you have a torque screw over here that you can loosen up and adjust the angles of the hose park so that if you have a hose coming off at 45 degrees it'll hang straight down off this 45 degrees or a vacuum hose that has a straight fitting you can adjust it straight so the hose will hang down straight. We wanted to eliminate the fact that a lot of hoses have different angles, 45, 30, whatever it is, and they don't hang flat in your truck. And we wanted to make sure this thing took up as little space as possible. The other thing you'll notice that's really unique is we, we in, uh, integrated a handle into the design. You know, think about a lot of residential technicians. This thing's sitting on the ground. They need an easy way to reach under, grab it, pick it up, and walk away with it. I've never seen a manifold with a handle, and it was just an element of the design we thought would be handy to have. That element grew from the idea of protecting a display. Initially the i-manifold did have a display and we found that after a little bit of time not having that display didn't hurt the product at all. And when it had a display the, the handle was engineered so that if you dropped it it would protect the display from damage. We found that the element of the handle was so handy that after we eliminated the display we didn't want to lose the handle in the product. The next part of the design that was, uh, that was really thought through was this element down here and it looks like it wouldn't really matter that much but this element of the, of the design allowed us to do several things. Number one, this side rail here is designed to hold accessories. So you can run Velcro straps through here and you can tie your probes to the back. You can attach a cell phone holder if you want to use a hands-free setup for your display. But also these, uh, these rails were designed for one very, very important purpose and that is to protect the probes in the back. One of the things that I really couldn't stand with some of the designs of digital gauges was simply the fact that the probes stuck out from the sides or from the front and they were just always in the way. And if you had that thing in your truck and you didn't dis disconnect the probe, you took a high risk of damaging your instrument. With the I-manifold, what we did is we made the probes plug in the back, 
they're recessed and now this can lay flat on your truck and you won't damage that probe and the probes can remain plugged in all the time. When you're done with your probes, you can coil them up, store them back here, Velcro them down, and they're out of your way and you're not going to damage your instrument or damage your probes. While we're in the back here, one of the last things I want to show you is uh, what we did for hook design. We decided not to go with a rigid metal hook assembly and decided to go with a nylon strap. So we used a two inch nylon strap and there's a steel rod in the back here that this is hooked to. When you take these four screws out and you go to the, to the battery door, you can actually pop this rod out and change this hook out with either the metal hook hook we have shown here or a magnetic strap assembly if you want to use a magnet to hook it to the unit. We wanted to use a hook because there's just so many places a hook works on a residential unit. They're good in screw holes and disconnects handles or even on the... Uh, on the grill on the top of the air conditioner. So we didn't want to eliminate that from the instrument, but this element here made it very easy to use and we really liked the fact that it was uh, uh, flexible as far as changing the design. So we decided that the nylon strap and the hook would be the method that most guys would use and that's what we would include with the standard unit. Also in keeping with the simplistic design, we did not want to have nine to ten buttons onto the screen. We wanted to make this thing very, very simple to use. So you notice here we have one, one center button that's a power button and another button over here that's our Bluetooth button to sync the Bluetooth with the manifold when you power it up. The, in the front of the display we simply have a couple of LEDs here. We have a power LED, a battery LED, a status LED which shows when we're transmitting data, our wireless LED for wireless probes, a Bluetooth low energy to show when you're connected to low energy Bluetooth, and a Bluetooth Classic icon to show when you're connected to Bluetooth Classic. After removing the four screws in the back, we get access to the back door of the I-manifold. Here's where we can take our hook out, set it aside. If we want to change the hook, it's just simply sliding out the rod, sliding a new hook in, and we're good to go. You'll see in the back here we're powered by six AA batteries. The secret is, though, it's actually only powered by three. The I-manifold works off of 4.5 volts of battery, and we actually connected two sets of batteries in parallel to increase your battery life. With six batteries in there right now, we're running about 120 hours. After some power optimization, we'll be able to tell you what the battery life will be. But right now, we've got about 120 hours with six batteries. So it'll last you for a good long time of testing, but if you had to, you could take out any three of these cells. So we'll just pull a set of these out here, get them out of the way, and you can see if we flip this thing back over that the I-manifold is still operating off of three batteries. The last feature I want to show you while we're on the back here is the micro USB. The micro USB is used for a couple different reasons. Number one, for uploading new firmware to the instrument. We can simply plug in a cord here with the firmware on this thumb drive and the bootloader will automatically upload new firmware to the device. The other reason we picked the micro USB is it can be used in, as an auxiliary power supply. So not only can you plug this into a wall outlet and power it all day, you can also plug it into uh, devices like a juice pack or auxiliary power supply and again get extended battery life and extended use out of the equipment. So a little sneak preview of what's to come. Uh, we actually have wireless probes that will be coming out in the next couple months and I wanted to show you a little bit about what we're thinking as far as uh, how our wireless probes will differ from everybody else's in the industry. So again this is a, a standard wireless temperature humidity so it'll read temperature and humidity out of the tip here and this is our button to sync and power obviously. We also though incorporated inside two temperature jacks that'll take the standard temperature cooper probes and plug right into the side. So you can actually measure four points of data simultaneously with this probe. You have temperature and humidity in the tip and then we have two points of temperature that we could actually like put this in a supplier duct and measure uh, temperature and humidity of the air in a supplier duct or temperature and wet ball or uh, temperature and dew point depending on what how you had the instrument set up but you could also measure suction line and liquid line temperature with two pipe strap probes plugged into the side of the probe so it allows you to measure a lot more than you could with a standard probe assembly the other probe we're working on is the pressure probe and the pressure probe will come in a high pressure and a low pressure version and they're both defined by the color of the tip here so this is a low pressure version of the probe and this probe same as the uh, other wireless probe will allow you to measure two temperatures and has power on the side for USB but it will also allow you to measure 
uh, superheat all by itself so we can get, because, because we have a temperature here, we can get temperature and pressure, calculate superheat, and with the other temperature probe on the side, measure box temperature. So this is a really, really cool probe. If you're doing supermarket cases or setting up a uh, supermarket refrigeration, this will allow you to measure pressure and temperature simultaneously, making the job of setting up an expansion valve very, very quick. Made it this far to the video, you've really made it to the best point because now we're going to see how well our design survives. You know, really, we designed this for a six foot drop test onto a concrete floor, free falling, and we want to see how well that's actually going to work. So, we're back here in the factory, and that's why you hear all of the banging and clattering going around here. We want to do this as raw as possible as we could, so I have that hooked up to an iPhone. We're reading right now, outdoor air temperature. I have a probe plugged into the back. We're going to take this up to the ladder, we're going to drop it. Uh, several times. We're going to see how it fares and then we're going to show you guys our final results. So drop test one on the back. Test two, handle down. So after several drops of the concrete floor in the back in the warehouse here, let's see how this thing survived. We've got a couple of reference gauges here, uh, very high accuracy reference gauges, and our overall accuracy in the I manifold is less than 1% total error. So let's go ahead and power this thing up and see how we do. So we're coming up here, let the regulator stabilize here. We're at 135.9899, we're just about stable at 136, we're at 135.6 here. We're at 299.67 and we're at 298.1. So you can see we're within one PSI of our reference gauges and considering the full scale of this is almost 600 pounds and this one's 250 pounds, we are well, well within the tolerance and accuracy specification of the gauge and the I-manifold did very, very well at surviving the drop test. Thanks a lot for watching the Imperial I-manifold drop test and hardware video. Hopefully what you got out of this is that we have a very innovative and rugged design. The Imperial I Manifold will give you years of service in the field. The next series of videos we're going to go over will be much shorter. They're going to cover each specific feature of the application and how to use it and get the most out of your work day and workflow. How to connect the hardware to the software and really make the I Manifold work for you. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them at the bottom of the video. We'd love to hear feedback from our customers, and specifically, we'd like to know your thoughts on the iManifold. This is Jim Bergman for Imperial Tool. Thanks a lot for watching.